So guys, what? I'll start with Alan, since Ryan talked very briefly the last episode. Alan, give me your overall, like, quick general thoughts about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Go. Oh, it's fantastic. And I, I honestly remember thinking um, when this movie came out that it was just so odd that we were going to be getting an animated Spider-Man movie that was going to be in theaters because you just typically don't... When you think of animated superhero movies, you just don't you just think of these straight-to-DVD, straight-to-Blu-ray or whatever, um, you know, movies or something like that. So this was um, honestly amazing, a real, like triumph in terms of, of what they were trying to do. Um, I'm trying to stay really generic on everything, but um, Shameik Moore was amazing. Uh, Jake Johnson was amazing. Uh, really everyone. I, I can't think that the, of anything in it where I would be like, I would really get rid of that or anything like that. Um, so really just an amazing film. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, what are your uh, uh, brief thoughts um, before we hop in? For me in a big way, uh, the animation was some of the best animation I've seen in a film, like mm. period, like up there with like that, that put, made me like in awe up there with like the Ghibli films, nothing like the Ghibli films clearly, but like the, where like I'm watching and my eyes are like melting at how gorgeous it is. Uh, it was really creative and I love how they made it like comic book. Like it felt like it was jumping right out of a comic book, which is like a super cliche, I think crit- like thing to say about the movie. Cause I feel like every single reviewer has said that. But I don't know. It's just it's just so true. Um, I thought all the character motivations were incredible, even considering some of the characters had very little time. I think every character was handled super well for such a big ensemble cast like this, which I think was like incredibly done. Like, I honestly didn't think that they would be able to pull something off like that, because even sequences towards the end of the movie with characters we had very little time with had me feeling certain things certain ways. Yeah, they had very stories for characters that didn't yeah. feel like they even needed backs. Mm-hmm. It, felt, it um, felt really good. Yeah, so I thought they did an amazing job with the animation, with the characters, the acting, the comedy. I laughed out loud several times. Uh, they really, like, understood, like, just the kind of, like, Spider-Man meme, like, territory. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were able to hit on a lot of that, and I was. they did a lot of things that surprised me, but I was really happy with it, just... You know, Jake Johnson was perfect too for the role. So, I, I, kind of everything Alan was saying also is just, just excellent, excellent time. I, people should definitely see this movie. Yeah, uh, I don't have a lot to add on to that. I thought that all the performances were really great. I, I didn't expect to feel um, as much as I did for the other Spider people, um, uh, yeah. as like opposed like to Miles Morales, like. I figured I would really care for Miles because he was like the main character, but like I didn't think that I would care so much about all of these other spider characters, and I did, and <laughs> I really enjoyed every character. Um, I thought the world felt really fleshed out, and I enjoyed that a lot. I liked um, I liked Fisk as the villain. I thought he was pretty sure. I thought like he did a really good job uh, at doing what he had to do, um, and. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the movie as a whole. Again, the, the animation is just absolutely spectacular. Yeah. Like, I can't say enough about that. So back to Fisk really quick. And that's, again, like another point I was making, like even characters, like obviously without spoilers, like uh, characters that get very little time to develop, they do a great job of developing, even if just in I a scene or two. I he was doing. I, I, uh, I really... And it kind of put Fisk, they did a great job putting Fisk on the other side of the coin of what some of the other characters were going through at the same time. But yeah, basically like handling them in a very different, obviously very different way. Uh, and that's what's so, I think, incredible, too, is they really do a great job of, like, I thought when I saw the trailers and stuff, I thought, like, it was just going to be an ensemble cast of villains, and they were just going to pop in, and none of them were really going to be that important. But I think they actually did a really excellent job with Fisk and made him a really, really cool dynamic villain with very little time to do so. So I really, I mean, it's not like obviously the best villain in a you know, right. in a movie ever, yeah. but like for, with what they did with him, it was definitely very serviceable and even more so for me because I, like I said, it really worked for me, even if it was just little scenes. Yeah, based on like, like I said like what he was and that was really because he was just not in the movie that much but I didn't think he needed to, to get his point across. Like I I totally a hundred percent agree with you. And I ended up like really feeling something towards the end of his arc. And I, I, I can't, 
I, I just really I think it's the movie is so well crafted. I, I just really enjoy it. And I'm it. really happy where they went with the character too. Obviously not going into spoilers, but they didn't like betray what they were going with for with the character throughout. Mm-hmm. And they and they followed through, which I think was really important, and they still were true to the character, which I was afraid towards the back end we were gonna get away from maybe. Uh, because they were making him sympathetic, but they did a great job of following through with his character. Uh, uh, and I was really impressed with what they did with him. And the other villains, I mean, they didn't really have, like... I mean, they had one really awesome villain that we're obviously not going to get into that was, like, really awesome, and I love what they did with. Um, but, uh... And you guys know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Like, midway through the movie, a villain's introduced uh, that I thought they did an excellent job with as well. Um... But most, for the most part, most of the villains didn't really have any other any uh, development other than Kingpin. Yeah. Um, Alan, what, like, what would you say that I'm gonna kind of rule out animation because I think we'll 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 kind of talk about that sort of later. But like, what would you say that your fate not your favorite, but like, what was one aspect of the movie that you didn't expect, or like something that you didn't think would you, you ta- attach onto? You know, like as much as you did like, the, if there um, is something in the movie that is no that yeah for you. yeah there definitely is i would say the the um the emotion behind it now granted it's a spider-man movie it's going to be emotional but i think particularly when you cast someone like jake johnson i, I don't you know i not going to spoilers or anything like that but he puts on a great performance and really makes you feel uh for his character and what his character is going through jake johnson playing peter parker um, and it's just, um, I think that that's probably the thing that I came out going, wow, I, I didn't expect that. It was a, a really great, it was really well written, you know, the character, and, and really, really well performed um, voice acting by Jake Johnson. I would say that Peter Parker, for me, was almost the standout of the movie. I mean, I think that there, there were a lot of great parts of the movie, but I think that that was where I came out of it going, wow, I, I really didn't expect it to be that deep and that emotional, um, especially particularly with his characters, you know, traditionally considered a funny actor, you know, more, you know, he is funny in the movies, he's, he's definitely funny in the yeah. movie, but some of the emotional yes. stuff that he goes into uh, was really something that let, made me thinking about the movie, you know, for days afterward. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Peter Parker's Spider-Man, but I, for me, the standout was more Shameik Moore's Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I think they did a lot of great stuff with Peter Parker and put and basically put him in situations that we have never seen in film before, really. I mean, kind of, but not yeah. real, not realistically. And I like that they had him like almost as like a foil to the other version of himself from the yeah. universe that he started. That like the, that that uh, Miles is from. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, but I think overall, just th- what they put Miles through as a character, I think was incredibly done. I think he was by far the most developed character of all of them, and I think that we would all agree because he's the main character. Yeah. Uh, but the whole movie g- revolves around him and what it means to be Spider-Man, that anyone can be Spider-Man, and that was what Miles Morales is all about, and that's what his creation was back, what, like 10 years ago, maybe longer, yeah. I mean, like 10 years ago. That's what his creation was all about. Feels and uh, and I think he represented that, and we're molding Miles into more of a character with this and with the PS4 Spider-Man game, I think they've done an excellent job of just kind of starting to characterize Miles even a little bit more than he was in the original comics. Because in the original comics, he was kind of like... I mean, he was his own character, but he was kind of felt a lot like a just like Peter Parker. But they, they're kind of starting to make him out to be a little bit different, which is really nice, while still going through a lot of the same stuff that Peter... the same problems Peter had when he was younger. Um, but yeah, I, I think... Miles Morales, I think, was just like I wanted to hug him several <laughs> times in the movie. Uh, eh, yeah, I feel you. No, he was he was amazing too. Um, when I say that, I felt like the Jake Johnson stuff was the standout for me. It's by no means a, a shot at anything else because I thought that uh, Shamik Moore was great. I thought that Haley Steinfeld was was great as Gwen Stacy, um, Marshall, yeah, as Uncle, Uncle Aaron. Aaron. Uh, really, uh, that, everyone. That was I, I, see, Uncle Aaron was my standout. I didn't. I I don't know. I, I guess I didn't know what to expect going into the movie, but I didn't expect to have all of those emo- emotions that I had throughout the movie. Like I had, I was really connected to Uncle yeah. Aaron. Like I, Uncle I, I oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, I was just gonna say like I like really. <laughs> I want to take my nephew to see the movie. Like yeah. I just like I, I, I felt their bond. Like I felt Miles and Aaron's bond, and I think that that was such a beautiful theme like throughout the entire movie and 
I, I just I really appreciated that. I, and it really stuck with me. Yeah, I really liked uh, Uncle Aaron's role, even though he's only really in the beginning. You get a little bit more of him towards the, the later on parts, yeah. but like you see most of him in the beginning. Um, I really, I, yeah, his character was excellent. He definitely had a, his place, his, he, his presence was very much felt throughout the entire movie. And I love how they end up concluding his character and what they end up going about with his character and everything it was really awesome. I agree, and um, Mahershala Ali played him so well. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I honestly... He's just one I, of my favorite actors working right now. He's yeah, so he's incredible. That, yeah, he's amazing. I Go Honestly, ahead, I don't think if there was... I was just going to say, I don't know if there's really anybody I didn't like, like, uh, voice yeah, acting-wise. Yeah, everybody was great. Like, I thought everyone did a really great job. Yeah, all the spider people, the alternate spider people, were all amazing, you know, themselves. <laughs> John Mulaney. They all served uh, yeah. their parts perfectly. Nick Cage. They, they casted, like, perfectly for those roles, in my opinion. Can we go, uh, Glenn? Nicholas Cage was just hilarious because he got to do his like Nicholas Cages and this type stuff. Yeah, but as a Spider-Man character, it was awesome. Spider Noir was really funny. Um, um, yeah, he had a lot of amazing, like great ones. I wish I could quote them right now, but I won't. Yeah, because uh, you'll see the movie. He is so funny, and so is John Mulaney. And seeing them like together, they're complete opposites in situations and stuff. I thought that was great. Um. Just all the spider people in general, I thought were handled excellently, even though they didn't have that much time to like develop them or anything. They were all so like, and I loved how they, and I think the most important thing is we're also not noticing. I mean, we've been talking about, we kind of talked about animation a little bit is how they were all differently animated. Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to bring that up. But, it's sti- but it never felt like, like they were all very clearly, every single one of them yeah, was like animated so Glenn's differently. Parker was like, mm-hmm. a, like a well, yeah, style. but, but they, but they, but it didn't feel jarring. And it didn't feel out super out of place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was visually done so well that it, no one, it didn't mind anything, but it also had a story based reason for everyone looking different as, as well. So that, I think that really just added to the immersion of it is just because of how, how well the like climax or like the, the ticking aspect of the, the, of the story is so well, like perceived throughout the visuals. Like, did I, did that make any sense? I don't know if that made any sense, but like, I think so. With, with how the story is set up, everyone has a reason for looking different, and that really added to the immersion of the film. And yeah, yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, speaking of voice actors, we, I mean, I didn't want to go necessarily go back to this, but Zach, you and I were giving Haley Steinfeld a lot of shit for her movie. <laughs> uh, what was that? Barely Lethal Barely that we watched. What? That's a bad movie. You can and she's check bad out in that movie. You can check out our commentary on that video that's on our YouTube channel. She's on fire um, right now. She's great in this movie. She was excellent in this. She yeah. was really good. It's almost like like I, I I don't think a single person was bad. Like I really liked her character. She played Gwen Stacy. Uh I think they have already announced that they're doing a spin-off yep. with with Gwen Stacy in it. So we're going to be seeing more of her, which is excellent. Yep. She was great. I have no complaints. She was her great. And I loved Spider-Woman her character. Silk. Yeah. Um that movie will have Silk in it, which is a really awesome character. Hell I'm excited yeah. to see more of her. I and love it's Silk. also going to have Spider-Woman who's love also Spider-Woman an amazing character so i'm super pumped for that movie when that comes out i want to see more movies like this i'm really like i'm really jazzed up about this they're giving them too so because they've got they've got a sequel to this this is making me feel the same way i felt after the lego movie first came out where Mm -hmm. i was like i want to see like keep doing these but then like now a couple of them or like one of them was like eh, and the new one looks eh. so hopefully i don't get the same feeling after these spider-man sequels and spinoffs but i loved it i thought this yeah yeah no i I thought um I'm excited to I see more. I thought the comedy was handled really well. I never like thought it was overbearing or anything like that. Um, I, I yeah, it was the, never the, out of place. Yeah, the jokes landed and they were. Uh, and that's just like Phil Lord and Chris Miller. 100%. I mean, they didn't direct it, but they produced it. But they're just the masters of like comedy it, in this way. This kind of think, goofy, yeah, like of almost dad comedy. Yeah, I, was yeah, say, I think, I think it was, Phil uh, Lord wrote it. Right? Phil Lord wrote it. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say it was Chris Miller. So I believe it was Phil Lord. Yeah, uh, I c- could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure pretty sure it yeah. was Phil Lord um, who wrote it. But they both produced this, so you know they had their hands in a lot of it. Because it also, like, you can, when you're watching it, like, it looks like, it, not like, maybe not, I mean, it looks, it, it feels like one of their movies, too, you know? It has that snappiness to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That all of their other movies, like, like, that the Jump Street movies had, that the Lego movie had, that, uh, like, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, that kind of snappy comedy. Like, mm-hmm. It feels like it, even though it was, I believe it was directed by three different people that are, their names are escaping me at the moment. But yeah, it was, I believe, directed by three different people. But, man, um, one thing, done. one thing I really loved. And, I mean, a lot of people are talking about this online. This isn't like a something that I, I just you know, came up with, but I really appreciated this is like the way that they didn't 
subtitle the Spanish that takes place in the movie. I think it did um, a couple of times. Did it? Okay. Well, I, I, didn't I think it did when it. Um, it did when um, when Scorpion. I think at one point was speaking. Yeah, they did for oh, Scorpion. Okay. Think, yeah, that, for Miles it didn't, and no, for, for Miles me, and his mom. Yeah, and I I loved that because it made it feel like I was just watching him in his real life. Like it, it didn't. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't have taken me out of anything. Like he's walking to school and he's talking to some friends and he's like yeah. going switching from English to Spanish. And I, I just was all about that. Yeah, it made and, me feel and, like and a that's real the thing. Really awesome for setting. Yeah, and that was great too because it's very personable. And I think if you put the subtitles, maybe you get away from that. And yeah. it, and it, again, what's it, it's not really important what he's saying because again, like he's kind of saying a lot of the same things he was saying in English yes. in Spanish. But yes. like it was just, it was really just like supposed to show like his multi his multi diverse background yeah. and it's also showing uh i don't know just how diverse new york city is yeah you know and it's showing that like he's speaking to people but it doesn't matter what he's saying you're getting we know what he's talking to his friends and the outside that he used to go to school with and he wants to get back to that and then he has of course foil when he gets to his new school which we're not gonna get into the movie and everything that's not a spoiler but yeah it was right in the beginning of the movie <laughs> but uh yeah no uh yeah 100 percent agree with you dude yeah, definitely. And I also, um, I really appreciate it. And I'm sure you guys noticed a bunch of them as well is there's so many Easter eggs just around the city and stuff like that. Um, I saw at one point, uh, Romita ramen, he walked right by, uh, a store called Romita ramen. And I thought that that was really funny, uh, cause of, um, John Romita. Yeah. Uh, and just a bunch of like these little Easter eggs. I didn't catch those. <laughs> Miles was, well, I saw one, Miles was scrolling through his phone. Yep, I B. Think. Bendis. Yeah. And I saw B. Bendis. That one was really yeah, obvious because Brian was, Michael Bendis was the creator of Miles Morales. Uh, so that was a nice little nod. Yeah, but it was I, the like contact right above his dad. Yeah. I forget who he was calling at the time. That was the only reason I noticed it was because it was right above the person yeah, he was. It calling. was not hidden. Um, <laughs> it was, but it was pretty neat. But I, I just, I absolutely adore the movie, and I can't wait to go again. I've only seen it once, but I, I just can't wait to check it out again. Yeah, I was and super I hope <laughs> that all ahead. these listeners check it out as well. <laughs> Yeah, I was super lucky to get to see it a day early, which was awesome. And then I saw it like I, I, I normally w- like I won't see it. I mean, a lot of times I, like if I see a movie twice, I won't see it right away. But I love this movie so much and I really wanted to see it with Alan. So me and Alan and uh, his wife and his son went to see it on Friday night, which was pretty nice. I love seeing it. It's definitely worth another watch, another watch or two. It's like it, it warrants it. I, I will say it's probably a movie that is better if you like us are fans of the character if you're if you're not inherently a fan of spider-man i think you'll still get something out of it but i think it's something that's definitely more improved like lego batman if you're a fan of the character going in yeah i think so but i think it's also good for like even if you're not like you don't have to be a gigantic fan of spider-man i think in a big way like i was saying earlier the whole movie is like i think good for young for kids to watch just in general i know that sounds I, I, dumb i agree i mean most kids are fans of spider-man to an extent but like i think it has a really good message to to kids uh maybe if you're our age but like i, I don't know i think it res- re- this movie resonates with more than just fans of the character in my personal opinion but i hear you because it's a lot of references and stuff that maybe uh, somebody like they, all they the didn't characters you're gonna see not, you you won't have the inherent because they don't go like all of his villains that show up like they don't they don't go over them a lot or anything so it's really just based on your knowledge of the character. Well, you don't really need to know anything about the villains. Well, no, you don't, but I'm saying... They're just villains. They're just costumed their... guys trying to stop... It enhances things. your experience just based on us knowing who they are, but like, if it's just a person who didn't know they were, they're like, yeah, they're villains. That, those well, characters didn't saying. serve any more purpose. I wasn't saying purpose. that you wouldn't like the movie. I was yeah. saying it enhances... It's enhanced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, we can agree. We can agree. I agree with you there. Um, I just like to argue. <laughs> 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 one, one quick thing is I... Uh, I don't know why I just feel like I keep saying I love, I love, 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 but I do. I love this movie. But um, one thing I really love is uh, the actual physical character design of like Miles Morales as Spider-Man. I love that he's still wearing his like uh, Nikes and everything. Like, I think that that's so neat. Yeah. Uh, It just really speaks to like his personality and all that. I don't know. I'm I'm like gushing, gushing, you know, Uh, same man. Like I've been a fan of, uh, well, Spider-Man is my favorite comic book character. Spider-Man and Batman, because I'm a basic bitch, are my two favorite comic book characters of all time. Because of, when I was a kid, I used to just love the animated Spider-Man show and action figures and the Batman movies when I was a kid. Anyway, uh, so I was gushing when I even first heard this movie was coming out. And then I saw the trailer and I was like, I need to see this movie. I was, my hype levels were so high, even going into it, because then the positive reviews are coming out. 
And I, it delivered on every way. So if you're a big Spider-Man fan, like, what are you doing not seeing it? I've seen people on Twitter go on and say stuff like, oh, yeah, well, it's not really about Peter, so I don't care. It's like, see the see the movie, jackass. Like, it's still amazing. <laughs> Peter's a big part, and, like, you'll learn something because Miles Morales is an excellent character, and he's super underrated. I'm so happy that he's being more popularized as of late in, the, in, in a couple things. Like, in Homecoming, he's referenced. Mm-hmm. Uh, in uh, in the PS4 Spider-Man game, he's a important side character. And in this one, he's the main character. He's the for, you know this movie's about him so uh yeah yeah and go see it and give them your money so i can win a bet uh, yeah speaking of um, that bet because i did decide to pull it up just to see what the numbers were for it it's opening weekend it made 35 million 363 thousand so 35 million uh 35 million dollars opening weekend it was number one that weekend um and we'll we'll continue to see how it does. I think I'm going to lose that bet. Yeah, I think you're going to lose that bet too. But I do think I do think uh, I want to get into um, if if you don't mind, I just want to talk about negatives really quick. Yeah, of course. I don't know if you guys have any, but uh, the main thing for me, I think, negative wise, and this isn't this is something that's uh, common in most uh, superhero movies in general. Uh, it's not really like a huge deal, but it just means it's it's, it's, it's not like a perfect movie or anything. Uh, my big, I think a big thing I have is like, it's not even a structural problem. It's just kind of, I don't want to say immersion breaking, but kind of immersion breaking because you'll get, I mean, it doesn't matter because it feels like a comic book, but I, I'm going to point these things out anyway, which, which would separate it from like a really good movie. The big thing I think for me is like, you have characters sometimes that just would pop in because the plot needed them to. And I don't want to get into spoilers or exact details, but I guess I'll just say a character name. Uh, it feels like Miles' dad is everywhere, and he's the only <laughs> cop in New York City. <laughs> like, I feel like he was, like, the only cop we saw in the entire movie. Like, in the beginning, it's like, oh, you see all these kids everywhere, and it's like, it seems like New York City feels huge. And then all of a sudden, like, when you get kind of in the midway on, it feels like New York City is, like, really small. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know what I'm saying? Like, cause, yeah, like, I it, definitely it, can. I can get that like like oh his dad popped in oh his dad popped in and like it's like where is everybody else where are the other cops where's like all these other like it's just one cop it feels in New York so city he's the real superhero i mean that's such a small thing like that's it really isn't a huge thing but it's enough that i think like it felt that's the one thing i think that felt kind of lazy in the writing it needed to happen kind of but like it still felt like I don't know. It's such a it's such a weird nitpick, and I know people that are listening are probably like, "Shut the fuck up, Ryan." That's such a <laughs> dumb complaint. You're just looking for things to complain about. But that was one of those things I noticed in the theater, like especially in the in the third act. Like there was one moment where I even turned to my friend, like I was already blown away the movie. I was loving it. But I turned to my friend, and I was like, "Really? <laughs> uh, he's everywhere." <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's off the top. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Alan. I was saying, off the top of my head, I don't know that I can come up with a lot of complaints. Now, granted, I saw it a few days ago and think I'd have something, but um, it's not that I don't believe it's a perfect movie or anything like that. I just think it did so much good yeah. and, and a lot great. Um, and I think that um, off the top of my head, for some reason, I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on any sort of you know negatives. But I, uh, you know, uh, I, th- I do agree with you. I think that there are a lot of things like that that are sort of like convenient. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't want to get into too many things. Just again, you know, spoilers. That, but yeah, yeah um, I think there's quite a few it makes sense it, it, inherently story. it had to have those problems because it's such a big movie and there's it's yeah, so it's ambitious like, because there's so many characters and it's trying to do so much also, that it kind of has to have those conveniences it's also not that interesting if another cop shows up yeah like, well yeah I mean, like, I, but, uh, <laughs> but you could have like rewritten it differently but what I'm saying is like also yeah it's like the movie was so ambitious and so big and there were so many characters that I really had no choice but to do that in order to make the emotional moments work Yeah. so there was already had these inherent problems to begin with so it's not really their fault in fact they handled it pretty perfectly but to me they're still it was still immersion breaking enough that those inherent problems were inevitable for a movie at this scale. Yeah, I didn't have. Um, I, I noticed it with Miles' dad. Um, I did. I thought. I, I I get what Alan's saying, and I also get what you're saying. Like I'm kind of on uh, on the fence in the middle. Like, yes, it he was he showed up because of like story beats. But you're right. I mean, they could have just rewrote those story beats. Um, there was one particular thing, and I'll tell you guys when we're off air that I didn't really understand. I thought was kind of a convenience that took place. Um, but I'll get to that because it's kind Do of you have a spoiler. Hint so um, that's with, not spoiling. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming most people that are listening to this have seen the yeah, movie. I, I'd but... say it's um, with how a certain group of people end up coming together. 
Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. actually, that's kind of a comic book thing, but they don't well, really explain it in the movie at all. Yeah, yeah. But, in fact, I don't really, they don't really, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying, though. It's, it's kind of not even really a spoiler thing, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. I just, yeah, I don't want to say it, but, you know, you get it. So, all right. So, since we, that's it, we talked about Spider Verse, but right before we get away from it, why don't we hit the people with some scores? You know, this can kind of be like a little review. So, Alan, what would you score? this movie uh like i said i think that it's a fantastic movie i have to rank it up as one of the higher comic book movies that i've seen so i'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10 nice ryan uh come back to me in just a second okay i have this as my highest ranked and my favorite superhero movie of the year um i'm also with alan i'm putting this one at a solid 8.5 out of 10 um, I gave, yeah, I'm also giving it an 8.5. I'm not going to keep, Ooh. keep you, uh, <laughs> keep, give us a suspense. guessing. Um, yeah, I think, uh, this is the best Spider-Man movie in my opinion. Uh, it's right up there with Spider-Man two, which I'd probably give, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a rating for Spider-Man two in the top of my head, but probably have to rewatch it. Even though I did rewatch it not super long ago, but I'd probably give that like an 8.5 as well. But I, I think right now Spider-Verse, it might be just cause it's so recent is the best Spider-Man movie. And Spider-Man two is like a close, very close second. Um, to compare to some of the other, like, if you guys think the 8.5 is low, that's not low for us at all. That's actually super high. Yeah. I don't give superhero movies very good scores. For example, uh, Avengers Infinity War, which I thought was great, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I give a 7 out of 10. I love that movie. I thought it was a really fun time. Uh, that I think this movie is that much better than that. And then, like, Black Panther, I give a 6 which also I really liked. That's not six isn't bad either. I liked Black Panther. That was fine. Uh, That was a fun movie and had a really good villain. Um, But that's just how much more I liked this movie. We don't ever really give tens. Yeah, tens are super rare. Once every every few years, like, like, do I give a ten? Like, my last ten was Arrival, and I can't think of one. I can't even think of the one I did before it. Yeah, I can't either, but I I know, like, I, I gave... Infinity War, a pretty high score. I think I have Infinity War on an 8, but I like this a lot more than Infinity... Uh, not a lot more than Infinity War, but I do I like this more than Infinity War. This is my highest rated Spider-Man movie right now as well. Um, not highest rated, actually, because I have Spider-Man 2 as the same score, and Spider-Man Homecoming just a little below that, but th- that would be my top three Spider-Man movies uh, yeah. into, the, into the Spider-Verse. We Spider-Man should do that 2 and, at um, some point. Spider-Man Homecoming. We should do that at some point. Go through characters and just rank... The movies based on our scores and stuff like rewatch them rewatch them or something that'd be kind of fun that could be fun oh i agree yeah that would be really I'd fun be i'd be i'd really enjoy that 